Hi, it's Terry with the Cover Chipboard, and I'm here with a new design. Um, it's part of my tiny village. The last one we did was this, uh, or the first one in the series was this uh, tiny church, which lights up. I don't have it connected to um, anything yet because I'm going to connect them all together, and it just sits on this base. So the school, this is a schoolhouse to go with it, and I've started working on it already. In the file, um, I wanted to give you some options that you didn't have on the church. So I actually took the coverings, which would be the outside of the church. For those who didn't want to do um, strips for siding, I've had um, drawn lines added to these shapes to create the look of siding. So here I'll put the two together and you can see the difference, hopefully. The church has strips on it and this one has been drawn on. So it's just an option <clears throat> for those who might not want to sit and do all the little strips of uh, cardstock to make their own siding. And um, you can choose whichever one you want to use. If you do the siding, I've already cut mine because I always do siding. And this, these are the strips. They're already cut into the shape, so all you have to do is peel them off the mat and glue them down. And I've got them for all the outside shapes that you need. And then there's a trim that's uh, cut from white cardstock. For, these are for the bottom, and the other pieces of the trim and the doors have all been cut out. You just need to do some folding on a couple other pieces. All the windows... Those are already pre-cut for you. So I've gone ahead and started. I've cut out all my shapes. Now I'm using the Cricut Craft board for the base and um, cardstock for all of the rest of it. So um, I've cut out. I also, instead of making these separate pieces like I did on the church, I've made them one piece so it's less connections and less folding or less cutting that you have to do. So I've already gone ahead and cut out these shapes and folded them. Everything gets folded towards the inside. This is the um, front, back, and sides of the church. This is the very front from the doorway that goes like this. And um, this is the uh, part on the top that holds the bell. There's going to be an actual bell used. And the roof for that part. So again, everything's all folded. And on this, this little roof section, all you need to do is fold inward towards the score line and then attach and glue it here on the end. Hopefully you can see that real good. And um, I've gone ahead and started attaching my pieces. So even if you want to use the strips, you still... It's a good idea to go ahead and attach these pieces as well because it just adds strength to it, the whole thing when you're done. Um, I've also gone ahead, the base is constructed in the same manner and I've gone ahead and done, you'll have this piece which I cut out of the craft board and it's just folded in and you have tabs on the inside corners that you glue. Then you'll need to poke a hole in the center and we talked about these in the um, other uh, the church files, there's a little black holder that holds your light. You poke that through the hole, then you poke your light through, poke a hole back here, and bring your wires out through that way. And then we'll also um, add a hole on the back of the church for the wires to come through. And so that part's already done, and we'll get to that later. That attaches to the main base. So I'm going to go ahead and continue and add all of my... Um, pieces uh, the cardstock pieces to the craft board pieces and you can use um, score tape if you want to attach these or you can use glue and all you do is just glue them on just like that and continue till you have all of the pieces glued on and then I'll come back and we'll construct it okay as you can see I have covered all of my pieces so I'm going to go ahead and start construction, and the first thing we want to do is to connect the front to the back, 
if you'll just fold that over and line these up just like that and I usually use a some kind of a tool and burnish that if I'm using the score tape or hold it if you're doing just glue and now we're going to connect the other side Burnish that. So we have these four pieces together. This piece needs to be attached to the front here, but there's some trim that goes right along here, so you might want to wait on that piece and do your trim next. From the bottom, this is the base, and you can see how this would slide right down over top. Again, you'll have to poke a hole back here. So if you do a hole about, I'm gonna try this with a hole punch, but you can do a hole about right there. I'm not gonna do this yet because I'm gonna go ahead and do my strips. And to attach your strips, well, we'll start with this. You can lay this flat if you want, or you can attach it just like that, or you can set it up, however, whichever way is best for you personally. But to attach the strips, I'll start with this side. And I'm just going to peel it off. I use tweezers off of my mat then I'm going to use um, you can use 1 16th or you can use quarter inch I think I'm going to use a quarter inch on the bottom score tape and I'm just going to run a piece of score tape along the bottom here Again, you can glue these if you don't want to use the score tape. Trim this little bit of excess off. I'm going to pull this backing off. And then I'm just going to start attaching my strip. I'm going to start at the bottom and slowly work my way over. And push it down. A little piece there I need to trim off. And then I'm going to peel up another piece. And I'm going to place this right on top, right on top, you'll feel the lip there. I'm going to place this right on top of that other piece. There we go. If you get off a little bit on the left or right, it's not going to matter because we have trim that will cover that up, but you might want to trim that off. Add another piece of score tape. Again, right up next to that lip. And it's pretty easy to feel where to apply the strips and the tape as you're doing it. off my next strip and my 
next one. And you just keep working your way up the piece. Just like that. Until you get all the way to the top. And that's all you need to do. So you'll need to add your strips all the way up to the top, then move on to your next piece. Add your strips that way. Um, when you go to add your strips on these pieces right here, it, and if you're using score tape, instead of trying to go across this way, it would probably be easier to do two pieces of score tape that way. Um, and then um, that would be less to peel off. So just keep adding your strips. Once we get all our strips added, you'll also want to come back and add your strips to this part, this part and to this part. And then we'll continue with construction after that. As you can see here, I've got all of my um, siding attached to the building. And I have glued this section onto the building and when you glue it on, you want to glue it, hopefully you can see down in here, but you want to glue it so that this part, the opening in it, is inside this opening. And what that is, is just to let light through so that you can get light up through here and through your side windows when you put the lights inside it. Um, the next, one thing I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention earlier was to... Um, if you're not doing the strips of siding and you're just doing the pieces that have the lines drawn on them, I used a Cricut. It is a wine. Um, does not say what point it is, but it comes in the pack with the, where you get like four or five different colors. I can't remember how many are in there. And that's the pen that I used to draw the lines with on the red. So, I'll put that in the post under the materials list. And that will be in the PDF file that's in the download folder. So the next thing I wanna do, oh, I also went ahead and poked a hole after I got my strips on back here in the back for the wires to come through. So you wanna do that. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a piece on the inside for our windows. Now I'm using, Hopefully you can see this. It's just a piece of uh, frosted kind of plastic from a folder or a, a divider. That will work. If you don't have any frosted uh, plastic, you can use clear plastic and use a um, piece of sandpaper and sand it one way and then come back and sand it the other way. And uh, just sand until you get it to look frosted. And that'll work. And that's really quick and easy to do. Um, don't sand that inside where you're gonna be breathing it. I would take it outside and, and sand it just as a safety precaution. You don't wanna breathe that plastic up in uh, your face. So um, that's what I've done is I've gone ahead and cut these pieces out. And I have, these are gonna be hard for you to see probably, but I've got two pieces for the sides. And then I have, um, if I can get hold of them here, I've got two uh, long rectangles for the front, for right here, and then I have another piece to go right here, and now that'll be okay. So all I'm going to do is add some score tape. Let's see, I want the, I think I want this frosted part out. So whatever side you want to face out, just add a couple of pieces of score tape here. Get all the backing off. You can use glue as well. I just like the score tape because then I don't have to worry about the glue squishing out. And you're going to attach this inside just like that. And then the same thing on these pieces. 
I'm gonna add my score tape on the top and the bottom. Again, I'm going to place it inside right like that same thing on this piece and they don't have to be cut really neat just you just want to get it so that they extend over the openings a little bit so you have an area to attach each of them with Here's the other one. So now you can see how I've got the windows in there. And let's see, next we're gonna do the long ones and I'm gonna attach those on the short ends. I'm gonna put my score tape on the short ends for those. And I know that's hard to see on this white background. But I'm just adding the tape to the edges. And then I'm going to remove the backing. Whoops, wrong side. And I'm just going to place this right down inside here. It doesn't have to be real neat or anything or even because you're not going to see it once you're finished. And place that one in there. You just want to make sure it doesn't extend beyond the bottom. So now I have all my windows in. And um, from this point, I would go ahead and add our trim. So to add the trim, let me find this one piece. Where'd it go? I did not do a piece that comes up and around over the top here, um, or I forgot to cut it out, so I won't do that piece, but I'll come back and do the others. But to show you how the windows will go on, we'll take these two little pieces. I'm gonna hold this with my tweezers. And I'm just gonna add some glue And you don't need a whole lot. I'm going to place this right here. And mine tore a little when I cut it. So I'm going to take the second one and I'm going to place it right over top of the first one. Just make sure you get it lined up good. And if you get any glue down in there, you can take your tweezers and help wipe it off. So there's one window. 
Now the door has let me find the door. In your windows there's two thin ones. You'll have two thinner windows that look like windows and two solid pieces. These are actually the door. And then you're going to have a door frame. Where's my frame? Well, I think I've lost my frame. So I'll have to cut that again. Here's another one of those. And here's another one. I've lost my door frame. So I'll have to recut that. Now there's actually four of these really thinner ones. And again, you want to just glue one on top of the other. So we'll do that real quick. And your windows will go together just like this. Your window frames. Everything has two pieces to give it more, th uh, to make each piece thicker. And you just want to try to line them up as best you can. Try to be neat. Now, when that's dry, you're going to attach it onto here. And there's a taller section and a uh, shorter section in those cutout areas. The shorter section goes on the bottom. Now I'm just going to apply this on top of here. Make sure it's lined up good. And I'm going to make the second one just like the first. Oops, my glue won't stand up. And then these are going to create the door. You're going to glue them on side by side in the center, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on this one. I'm not pushing it down real hard just yet because I want to um, make sure I've got them in the center. And straight. Whoops. That looks good. And then you have a piece that goes around and I forgot to cut that out or I've misplaced it amongst all the other pieces because I don't see it in here. <clears throat> so that's the same way that you do your windows. For your windows, you'll take two windows, 
glue them together. Ah, can't hold on to things today. Now the openings and the windows are both the same, so you don't have to worry about orientation with them. When you get your two pieces together, then you want to glue it onto the house. And it doesn't take much glue at all. Got a little piece of glue sticking over there. And all you want to do is place those so that they cover the sides of the red. And that's it for your windows. So you wanna go ahead and add your door, your window here, your two windows here, these three windows and those three windows. And once I get that done, I'll be back. Okay, so um, when we last left off, we were putting our doors and our windows. You can see I have all of those done and I have added the extra trim. Um, these pieces are in the kit and they have folds on them on the corners and they actually wrap around. My suggestion is to glue this piece first, leaving these unglued and then add your glue to these pieces afterwards and then it's easier to get them in the right spot. Same thing on this front piece. This, this section wraps around to the other side and same thing on the back, it wraps around. Then you have the long strips and you've got extra of these in the kit or in the file and these are to go around the bottom. And the thing that I suggest to do is to take this. If you wanna glue it, that's fine. If you wanna use um, score tape, just go ahead and put score tape on the whole strip. Lay it down, either place a mark or crimp it with your fingernail so you know where to cut it, and then you can just apply it. And it went all the way around all the sides, even these little pieces at the front. So once that's done, the next part will be the roof. And you'll find two um, rectangles that you're gonna cut out of the craft board and just put score tape around them or you can glue them just like I've done and once you do that you're going to apply the rectangles of black cardstock or brown whichever color you use for your roof to both sides so I've got everything but this one part done so let's apply that one Now you may not get these on here perfect, and if you don't, you can either take a black marker and run around the edges, or you can use, uh, this is Ranger Distress Ink. You can't see it because I tend to do this, but um, it's called Black Soot, and that's what I've used. I don't apply that till afterwards. So let's get this piece down. So again, once these are down, really good. If you're using a marker, you can just take the marker around the edges. If you want to use the distressing ink, that's all you have to do is rub it around the edges. It just kind of finishes it off. And you only have to do it really on three edges because you're not gonna see the fourth edge. It'll be covered up on top. Just remember that when you go to put these two pieces together, find the edges that you did not distress and you wanna put those together. So you're gonna take these two pieces, butt them next to each other, like that. Then you have two pieces in your, um, in your, uh, the files. There's a wider one and there is a um, skinnier one. 
So you want to take the wider one, and I fold it in half, and then I've added score tape. You can use glue on either side. And you want to pull these off, the backing. If you're gluing, glue one side at a time. I'm going to take these apart, and I'm going to add this right up next to this very outside edge. So that the flap is this way. It, it folds to my left. If you get extended over like this, don't worry about it. We'll fix that in a second. Then you want to hold this down and butt this piece up to the next one. And you're going to fold that over at that point. And you want to burnish those to make sure they're good and stuck. Or let them dry completely before you um, go messing with them. And then I'm going to cut off this little bit of excess I had right there. That's going to be inside and you won't see it. And this forms our roof. I didn't get that trimmed off quite well enough. And that's going to form our roof for our church, for our um, schoolhouse, just like that. You also have a second roof that goes here, and you'll finish it in the same manner. You have four, uh, two craft board pieces and four cardstock pieces, and then you can use this. Uh, thinner piece strip to connect those just like we connected the big roof. And once you get those connected, then you want to apply glue all along these edges and place your roof on top, making sure that you have the same amount of space here and here. Here won't be as big of a problem as right here. Um, because these will move on you. So you need to make sure that you've got them in the right spot. When you do, hold it until it's, the glue start, starts to set and hold it so you don't have to mess with it anymore. And then you'll apply this roof in the same manner. So I'm going to finish my roofs, and then I'll be back, and we'll go on to the next part. So now we're going to work on the roof. Um, I want to make a correction um, I had previously mentioned uh, about putting this small roof on and using this narrow strip. That's incorrect. The narrow strip is for the larger roof section. Once you have your shingles on, this goes on top, folds over, and it finishes off this edge. So don't use this narrow strip. There will be two smaller strips um, in the files, and those are to be used with the smaller roof. So just like we did on the, um, the larger roof, I have my, this tiny piece folded and I have my score tape on the left and right sides. And I'm gonna peel the backing off on these. Well, if I get that to fall off. And we're going to attach these two roof sections together. Again, putting, um, this on the very outer edge of that piece. Then butt these up together evenly. Oops. And fold that over. Then you want to burnish, make sure it's stuck down really well. And if you have any excess on the edges, you want to trim those off. And that takes care of this piece. And I did also do the um, use the black soot on the bottoms and this one side. Again, you don't have to do it on this side because it's going to be up next to here. So we'll go ahead and attach this small roof quickly so you can see. And I'm just going to put a pretty good amount of glue along these edges here.
And then the piece, the side that goes to the back that's unfinished without the black soot on it, I'm going to add some glue on there too. And this quick drying glue um, dries clear. So whatever excess you have on there, you don't need to really be too concerned about if you get it on the building itself. So I'm going to just very easily place this down. And I want to make sure that it's sitting snug and sitting snug towards the back. And you need to kind of hold that until the um, glue sets. I'm going to wipe off my excess over here. And you'll want to hold that, like I said, firmly. You want to make sure this is snug up against the back edge here. And just kind of hold it there. And like I said, I you can see I got quite a bit of glue over here, but it will dry and not show. And you just really want to make sure that you get it on there to dry well. And that's the same way that we're going to add this roof here. And um, for the little one, I would go ahead and attach it. If you want to do your shingles on the big roof before you attach it, that's, you know, up to you. It might be a little easier. It might not. I just go ahead and attach it, and then I do mine. I find it easier or just as easy. Um, the same with the little one. You know, if you think you, you might not feel comfortable doing it once it's attached, then... By all means, do it ahead of time. So that should be... So I'm going to set that aside and let that dry. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the shingles on this part. So you have your shingle strips. And you can use glue. If you have score tape, I find it easier to use the score tape and quicker. And it doesn't... You don't get the wet on your roof. Sometimes I think the wetness will make it kind of be pliable and you can get it out of shape. So I really prefer the score tape for shingles. And all I'm going to do is apply, this is one fourth inch score tape, a strip. I'm going to apply another strip on top of that and I'm going to work my way up the roof just with a bunch of strips of score tape. And once I have those worked all the way up to this point right here, you don't want to extend beyond this um, fold or at the peak. You don't want to go over the peak. So once you get those on, make sure your tape's down good. And I'm going to remove this backing. And I'm gonna take a strip. Let me make sure I got the right side. And you're going to start with it even, with the strip even with the side of the roof on this side at the bottom. Come all the way across. And you're going to have excess. Push that down. Trim off your excess. I'm gonna take the next piece off. And your second piece, you want to stagger, if you can see the slits in here, you want to stagger those so that when you overlap your strips, you'll have this strip, hopefully you can see this well, but you'll have this strip, let me try putting a piece of white underneath this real quick, let's see if this will work. Now you can see the slits, hopefully. So you want to stagger those slits so that they are opposite each other. So where this one has starts at the end, it has a slit here. Your second one 
will be placed where it extends beyond this edge so that that slit is in the center of one of these long sections. Like that. Hopefully you can see that. So, um, we'll just keep applying our strips in that manner. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see with this black. Let's see if I can get a little bit more light over here. need fairly good lighting. And there's my second strip. And again, I'm going to trim off the excess. I better put that over there before I lose it. And then go on with your next strip. off this next piece and my next strip strip and you just keep working your way up until you reach this point here and I generally once I get a few done I'll take a my bone folder and I want to kind of make sure they're stuck down to that tape really well and hopefully you can see now how they've staggered and how the uh, long section or the the each little full rectangle the previous um, slit will rest kind of in the center of those so hopefully that makes sense and you can see how it's done. So I'm going to go ahead, finish adding my strips. Go ahead and add them to the front. They're done in the same way. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll attach the roof and finish off the roof. And then we have this little piece to go. Okay, so when we left left off, we were working on the roof. Um, as you can see, I've attached both roofs. We've added the shingles and we added the strip across the very top. Now you might want to take some of your black um, soot and run it across over top of the sh shingles if you want. You could also use some white if you want more of like a, a gray and white or black and gray type roof. You could run some white over top, white ink or white brush white paint on top. Um, I may go back and do that in a little bit. I'm not sure yet. So the next part would be to do this little piece that goes on our very top and we last had just added the siding on it you'll find some strips that you fold in half that you can put on this which I've already done your trim work and when you put those on when you get to this point you'll have to trim this off just a bit uh, just that little corner so once you've done that there's a longer strip and you just wrap it all the way around and glue it and then you'll have four more pieces that are just long rectangles and they fold in half and you will take those and if you can see down inside hopefully you can see where I've glued them on you just glue them on at the bottom inside and then this piece was our top that we had already constructed with the craft board and I've covered it with the black triangles to match the roof 
And um, if your pieces, depending on how you put this together, your, your rectangle or your triangles could be a little larger, maybe a little smaller in some spots. Just trim them as needed. And when you get done, if you have any of the brown showing through, just use your black soot ink or black paint, black marker, touch it up. And then when that's done, all you have to do, just like we glued the roof, you're going to add some glue in here along this edge. On both sides. And a little bit to the insides here. Okay. Then you want to come back, oh, about an inch, maybe, and just place that right on top just like that and hold it until it sets up. Just give it a few seconds and then once it's set up, then you can set this aside for a few minutes. The next step would be to cut out our base and the base is cut out of the Cricut chipboard. You can use any kind of cardboard. Um, you want it to be sort of thick, so I probably would suggest duplicating or doubling up on your chipboard or your cardboard to make it the th same thickness as the chipboard. And then you'll notice this has a notch. Oh, I've also then come back and covered this with paper. It's from the same paper pack that we use for the church. Um, and uh, I've covered it and then done some distressing on it. And if you notice, this is, has this little indentation or cutout area because these are going to fit together. And if you'll just start and place it, you can, there's several areas that you can place it and adjust it to fit and that's how it will just sit now once we're done if you want you can from the underside tape these together and um, so it's you can pick up more than one at a time if you want or you can just leave it unattached and move it around as needed so then what we're going to do when our church is done is we're going to set our church on here whichever direction you want and before we do that, we need to, um, going back to this piece with the light in it, um, I discussed this before and, and how to do your lighting. Uh, there is a post on how to connect the wires. I have left my wires unconnected because once I get finished with my village, then I'm going to try to connect them all together. Uh, I believe you can connect like up to, I don't know, gosh, 25 or 50 of these lights together on one power source. So I don't want to finish mine off until I know exactly where I'm going to put it and how it's going to sit. But if you want to, you can finish each one off and put a, a separate power source. There again, you can also use a tea light if you don't attach this on top of the base and make it where you can take it on and off. So we want to go ahead and add some glue to these bottom strips fairly generous amount then we're going to thread our wires through this hole in the church back or I mean in the I get my buildings mixed up the schoolhouse thread those through the back Then you can place this up inside the building. So once it's inside, don't push it all the way up in. You just kind of want to barely put it in there for right now. Decide where you want your church or your schoolhouse to sit on the base and set it down. Give it a few minutes. That base should drop down. And once it's dropped down, you can... Well, hadn't yet. I'll pull this out a little bit more. That'll give me an idea of where it wants to sit. 
And now we're going to let that dry. Now, once your piece with your light in it has um, the glue is set up, you can place your schoolhouse on top. Now, if you ever have, you know, it's loose, so you can take it on and off if you want to use the tea light inside. And if you want to add a bell, you can glue a little bell up in here. I didn't have one that looked to be the right size. It's a pretty small bell that you would need. And then I'm also going to have a little um, sign here that I'm going to attach to the front, maybe add some steps. Um, I might do a little bit more to it, we'll see. But that's the construction part of it. And then I will, if I add finishing touches to it, we'll come back and show those. So that's the end of our construction tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to see what you've done with your um, little buildings, the church and the schoolhouse. And I look forward to um, making the next one. So keep watching, stay in touch, and I'll see you next time. Bye.